G'day legends, welcome back to another episode Young Nomad Style of course, where our motto is live free. We hope you're healthy and well and staying safe wherever you are in the world. And on this episode, well, let's just backtrack a little bit and rewind. This episode did not go as planned. A little bit late for what we had forecast to share with you this week. Um, we had a new addition that we were having installed on Shermanator, our LC200 series Land Cruiser behind us on Friday. But unfortunately, the naughty C word, COVID, struck down our four wheel drive mechanical workshop. So that install didn't happen. I was hoping to share with you guys and girls uh, the product itself, the before wire, the during installation, and the end result. But the show must go on and the content sharing must continue. So on this episode, we're gonna share with you a little bit behind the scenes, what we're doing as a family of five, three humans, two fur babies, to hit the road to travel and work Australia full time. So if you haven't already folks, make sure you hit that subscribe, smash that bell so you get all the notifications of all the wonderful content we're sharing with you proudly. We take great pride and we immensely enjoy sharing this stuff with you so that hopefully it helps inspire you and your family and your loved ones to get together, to get out on the road, travel, explore and see our beautiful country Australia more. So one of the most common questions that I get is, as we embark on our travel in three weeks time to live out of a caravan and car full time is, what do you take and what don't you take? So on this episode, I'm gonna share with you some products. I'm not sponsored or endorsed by these products by any means, but I'm gonna share with you why we are taking these products. And there's really three main things that I'm looking for in any product because as we minimize, we declutter, we're mindful and super conscious of weight and space, every product that we bring with us, an item, needs to have a purpose. And the three things that I'm really looking for is does it provide safety, does it provide convenience, and does it provide comfort? So on this episode, I'm gonna share with you some of those products that I consider as non-negotiables that, that I carry in the car, as well as the caravan. Now also, I'm gonna share with you some upgrades that are gonna be happening, yes, this week on the Land Cruiser. So I'm gonna show you the before now and some upgrades that we're doing to the caravan and an upgrade that we've done to the caravan as well. So some things you're gonna see on this episode are the befores and then in next week's episode airing this coming weekend, you'll see some of the finishing touches of what I'm gonna talk and share with you on this episode. But like I said, if you haven't already, subscribe, smash that bell, because only about 55% of you guys and girls are subscribed to our channel. And uh, we just love putting this together so that hopefully it motivates you to do more of what we're doing. All right, let's jump straight into the episode. So behind me, uh, I've got an assortment of products that we've got ready, packed, good to go. Now these are products that I've built up over a period of time obviously. This venture around Australia didn't happen overnight. It's almost three years in the making and building up to for it all to happen. So first thing, I'm just gonna point out this big one here in the box. This was what was gonna be installed last week by our four wheel drive me mechanic, uh, Rock 4x4 Accessories. So it'll be done this Friday. Big shout out to those guys. Uh, Kerry and Chris and their team know a lot about me and uh, my vehicles over the years, not just the Land Cruiser behind us. But essentially what we've got in here is a single wheel carrier. Excuse that plane, for those that don't know, I, I live near a RAF base, um, which I find super cool because you get to see awesome um, Air Force planes leaving just nearby and you feel safe, obviously. Um, so in this box here, we've got a uh, Outback Accessories single wheel carrier. Now, for those that don't know, the LC200 has a spare wheel underneath at the back here. For us, it hasn't been a problem. For the full drive enthusiast, it might be an issue if you're going extreme off-roading, there is a potential that you can get hooked up on that wheel on a steep incline, potentially. But for us, we're not doing any extreme off-roading, so it hasn't been an issue. The main reason, but why we're looking to get that spare wheel out and onto the single wheel carrier is so that we can carry these four brand new treads um, for recovery. Now, the single wheel carrier, some of you might ask, and again, if you've got any questions, just drop them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. I've really enjoyed all the comments that we've been getting on our content and getting back to each and every one of you guys. I love the engagement, I love connecting with you, and I love the feedback that we're getting. So please, drop the comments in below. But the reason we've gone a single wheel carry for us, it suits our needs. We don't need to carry any more jerry cans. I don't need to carry two, uh, two spare wheels, I believe. I've got good 
33 inch Toyo RT tires. Uh, so I've just got the one spare, but I'm also mindful of ball weight. That van that you can see in the picture, when it's fully loaded, we're gonna be nudging three tonne. Now obviously I've had an upgrade, suspension upgrade in the Land Cruiser to accommodate the extra weight, but I'm still very conscious of ball weight because by the time we add on the box that we've got on the front there, the tools, the Q Weber and stuff that we're holding in there, we've got 65 litres of water in the back of the cab of the Land Cruiser, fridges, a lot of the stuff I'm storing, uh, which I'm gonna show you in a moment, I'm gonna unpack that cab, because when I pull up to caravan parks or anywhere pretty much, a lot of people look in the back there and say, Chris, what are you carrying in there? So I'm gonna show you some of the essential stuff we carry in the caravan and some of the non-negotiables that we ca carry in the car as well. But for us, the single wheel carrier was perfect. Um, it didn't have too much weight to it. It gives us the ability to mount the treads. So the only thing I'm waiting on at the moment, once this baby gets installed, I've got a tread mount that's coming from K-On. Um, so I'll break down the costs here for you as well. So firstly, that Outback Accessories was $1,500. Um, you can't buy directly from Outback Accessories. I got it through opposite lock at Windsor Gardens here in South Australia. You can get them to install it. They were booked out, the time didn't suit for me to get it installed by them. Uh, plus, I'd rather give the business to the local guys and girls at Rock 4x4 Accessories. So that was $1,500. The treads, I got these on sale at super cheap, 179 bucks each. I think they've now gone up to $229 or $239 thereabouts, give or take. Um, but then I've got a K-On tread mount that comes with your locking pins as well. So uh, that simply mounts on to the rear wheel um, and then into the carrier, obviously, of the rear wheel itself. And then it's sort of about yay big where they'll have the locking pins that will go through the treads. Now, I like that option because one, I don't have the scope to put these up on the roof rack because of the boat loader, my sunroof. By the time I get the tinny up there, there's simply no room to house these on the roof. The other thing I like about it being on the rear wheel, it's quick and easily and accessible. At a moment's notice, I can just simply unlock it pull the treads off, recover myself, away we go. Um, it does come with a, a locking system to the tread pins as well, which is great. Um, and that will house those on the back. The other thing that was important to us, I'd love to have eight treads if I could, obviously for the four wheels of the caravan, but we've just got nowhere to put four for more treads. Uh, on the rear spare of the caravan, we've got a me mother bag, which I'll jump to that in a moment. Um, and I just don't have the ability to put on uh, more treads at this stage. Might look into it down the track, but for for now, we're not looking to do any extreme off-roading whilst the caravan's in tow, obviously. We'll get down some corrugated road, some bulldust roads, I'm sure, but when we do go off-road, more harsh conditions will be unhitching. And the fact that we've got these on the back with us at all times means we're pretty safe. We've got it on the car. And if we get bogged in the car, we've got the treads good to go. You can see here the mean mother rear wheel bag. That there we got from Rock 4x4 Accessories. Again, I'm giving you guys a good plug here, Chris and Kerry. Uh, 120 bucks. I love these. I've gone through so many bags over the years. I've bought the $70, $80 brands online, eBay. They just don't last. The sun kills them, and they last probably maybe two years at most, I think. These guys I've had before, they are strong. They are sturdy. Good seat bu uh, buckle material. Um, uh, sorry, seat belt material. Awesome buckle mechanism like the buckles on them are really big and then they've got sort of a wetsuit material that covers the butt the buckle so if the sun hits it constantly the plastic of the bus, um, buckle is not going to become brittle and break over time now this will be going on the spare wheel of the car so that we've got enough bag to remove rubbish. Because one of the things we're conscious of when we're off grid for a week plus at a time, uh, we've got a rubbish bin outside the caravan, yes, but once that's full, where do we take it? That's what these bags are for. One here on the back of the car, one on the back of the caravan as well. So we can carry you know, a good two or three substantial size rubbish bags, if not more, while we're off grid until we get back into mainland population, you know, populated areas as such. So that's going on, so stay tuned. Next week's episode, I'm gonna show you the finished version of all this installed, good to go. All right, the next thing I'm gonna show you is tires. So uh, one of the things when you're on the road full time, as will be, you gotta be self-sufficient. You can't be reliant on anyone. Now, whilst I've got premium RAA cover, there could be times and situations where I might be somewhere where a tow truck can't get to me. So one of the things we wanna avoid, and cause I'm only covering one spare tire, as I mentioned, um, is uh, being able to DIY tire repair yourself. Um, so I've got this slime bottle. 
So that again is from super cheap. So I should point out the Me Mother bag's 120 bucks. Alrighty. Um, the slime bottle here, I think I got for 20 or $25 from super cheap. You get different size bo bottles depending on the size of your car and tire. Obviously I've got the big 33 inch tires, so we need the biggest bottle possible for that. This here has a plastic tubing that simply goes onto your nozzle, screws into uh, the valve of your tire, you squeeze it into your tire and it will seal it from the inside of any potential leaks or holes that you might have. So that's one bottle that I carry as a non-negotiable. The other thing that I carry is uh, Holtz Emergency Puncture Repair Tire Weld. Very similar, but this is can, uh, this is can aerated and again it just goes onto the valve of your car, tire, Squeeze it, it's going to fill your tyre with like a chem weld type product on the inside and it's ideally going to seal any leaks that you might have. So they're two liquid fired products that I've got. Then obviously the big one that every four wheel drive enthusiast will carry as a non-negotiable. Um, I think the tyre weld was about 20 bucks as well. Um, and you've got to make sure when you get these two guys, particularly if you're in a four-wheel drive, they will stay specifically if they're for four-wheel drive vehicles, small vehicles, large tyres, big vehicles, etc. So make sure you're buying the right one. Um, the tyre puncture repair kit. So uh, this one here, you know, I got from, again, super cheap, Ridge Rider. I got it while it's on sale. Um, whether you buy them from any four-wheel driving outlet, they're all pretty much very similar these days. You're probably looking at spending around 40 bucks. You've got your licorices, you've got your screws, um, and your puncture repair kit in there that you can fix it all yourself. You've got um, additional valves in there as well. Um, so if you lose a valve, you've got spares there as well. And then you've got a bit of grease there as well just to help with the licorice going in. So this is obviously more so for serious stuff. If you've got a, a big, you know, a big gaping hole as such in your tyre, you, you definitely want that for sure. So that goes in the back of the cab, as do the, does the can, the chem weld, and the slime bottle as well. The other thing I'll point out here is we've got an SJS um, 1500 amp max cell power jumper pack. This is one of the biggest that you can get on the market because obviously I've got a 4.5 litre twin turbo V8. Uh, so to jumpstart your car, the bigger the engine, the bigger the pack you're going to need. This one here was about 450 bucks from Autobahn, um, and I think it allows from memory up to five jumps on a vehicle engine with the capacity that my vehicle's got. Um, so again, if we go flat, for whatever reason, we shouldn't. I've got twin 105 amp batteries, AGM batteries in the front that I can isolate. And then I've also got a 200 lithium battery in the back there, but you never know what can happen. Best to be safe than sorry. So that's the jumper pack there. So it just means if anything happens, we can't get started. We can get ourselves started without the needs of leads or another vehicle. Um, behind there, I've got my 200 amp solar blanket. I'm not going to bring that out and unfold it. Everyone knows what a 200 amp solar blanket looks like. Now the reason I've got that, I've got 350 amps, uh, 350 watts, sorry, I should say, of solar on the car and 250 watts uh, solar, uh, sorry, 200 watt solar blanket in the cab of the car as well. Uh, why do I have that? If it's a cloudy day, I can just boost up more solar. More solar that you have, the quicker your battery is going to charge. But also the caravan, if we're off grid and we want to run the air conditioning, I've got 900 watts of solar on top, so if I snap the blanket in, there's 1100 watts of solar that's feeding back in to the lithium batteries so that if we need to use things like the air conditioner, we can do so to some degree on a nice clear day like today. What I will point out, excuse me turning my back on you, but while I do that, let me know your thoughts of our t-shirts that I'm wearing. The wife actually created these new t-shirts and as you can see it's got our logo here and some cool stuff on the back. I must admit the wife has done a much better job at designing the t-shirts than I have and uh, she might be assigned to future designs YNS style. Stay tuned we're going to be releasing some merch and apparel down the track we're just getting the designs right once we get that right we'll be sharing you guys and girls the ability to buy t-shirts, singlets, shorts, jumpers the whole lot. Um, I'll get to that product in a moment. Uh, just got these the other day <clears throat> the Wanderer dog bed. 
So our fur babies are like our children. If we're camping in comfort, absolutely they must be camping in comfort as well. Uh, these camp beds I got from BCF. This is the large dog one. It's rated up to 100 kilos. It was $69.95. We bought two of these. We probably could really get away with one of them because they're quite large. I think they're about uh, 100 centimetres by 100 centimetres by about 75 centimetres off the ground. The reason we like them, um, our dogs, Max, he's you know 11 coming on 12, he's getting a bit old. So we just want to get them off the ground, out of the prickles, out of the ants, whatever's on the ground there. Um, obviously airflow, if it's getting in under the bed, it'll just keep them a little bit cooler as well so they can enjoy the outdoors as much as we do. Um, We'll take two with us, again, conscious of weight. The wife and I were umming and ahhing, do we really need two? We actually did a trial the other day and put this out and they both jumped on the same bed, which we knew would happen because wherever Charlie sits, Max is gonna sit bang right next to her. So we're still up in arms, whether we take one or two, but we've got the dog beds there absolutely as essential in the caravan for them. Okay, jumping into some tools now. So first I'm gonna show you um, what we carry in the caravan. Behind me, you can see I've got a full drawer system which carries all my tools on the road. I actually just decluttered that drawer because again, conscious of weight as we're on the road, I took stuff out of there that I had either two or three of the same and minimized it to one. So in that drawer system, I've just got the bare essentials of what I would need if I need to take off a hose clamp, replace a hose, um, replace a belt, whatever it might be. I've just got the essentials mechanically in there. Uh, this bag, Irwin bag, I actually got it from Bunnings. I couldn't believe the price of it. It's quite big. I don't know if you can see in the picture, but it's actually a really good size. Um, it's got two side compartments and then three compartments down the middle there that you can take out each piece to make the compartments bigger if you wish. Nice big heavy duty strap, 52 bucks from Bunnings. Now the reason I got that is to carry all my cordless stuff. And as you can tell, the Velcro is good. So, you know, just got my G clamps in there. So if I need to do any on-site repairs, we've got the silicon, silicon gun, all important silicon gun, so that, you know, if I need to redo any silicon that maybe um, breaks up over time, the old T-Rex, if you're not on it, get on it. This is the best stuff you could ever buy. If you need fast grabbing um, silicon like this, you get it color in color. We've got uh, steel gray here, you can get it in white, clear. This stuff holds up to 320 ton per square meter and it sets off literally in a minute. Um, you pay a little bit more for it. I think it's about 16 bucks a bottle. I absolutely swear by T-Rex for everything. T-Rex the world. Um, I've obviously got in here some spare um, Makita cutting uh, blades as well. And then obviously just some, you know, 115 mil um, polishing, whatever, smoothing off blades. I don't know what they call these steel Inox blades. Yeah, anyway, they're obviously what you use to get rid of your burrs and your sharp edges and whatnot. Um, in here, We've got the all-important ratchet gun, so mainly for putting down the legs in the caravan, hence why this bag stays in that front box of the caravan. We've got the ratchet gun. We've got my cordless drill. We've got the all-important blower as well. I actually just bought this the other day. This is super cool. It's uh, the lazy man's way of keeping your um, awning area clean of leaves, dust and dirt. Uh, so I've got a little blower Makita there. Now you're probably thinking, oh, you got all the Makita gear, Chris. No, I'm not sponsored, folks. Makita, if anyone's from Makita watching, seeing all this stuff, my wife, God bless her, has bought everything Makita for me over the years. Absolutely love and endorse Makita as a good quality product. This is obviously my angle grinder as well that we take away with us, because look, I'm hoping we don't really have to use this stuff, but you don't know, there is, there is steel. You know, there's steel on the car, there's steel on the caravan. We might need it at some point. Um, and as I said, that caravan is gonna be our home, away from home, full time on the road. Um, so I wanted just the essential stuff as needed. But if anyone from Makita is watching, or you know someone from Makita, look, I'd love to be in contact with them or have them get in contact with me perhaps. Um, so that's the bag that goes in that box at the front there. Obviously there, we've got some drill bits as well. But I'll just point this out, the wife bought me at Christmas time an electric drill, uh, sorry, an electric screwdriver. So now, instead of me having to carry half a dozen screwdrivers like I had in my toolbox in the car, I just need one, that's it. Because I've got all my drill bits 
in this little box here from Allen Key drill bits. Don't know if you can see if you're falling out, but I'll just show you up nice and close. Long drill bits, smaller drill bits, hex heads, you name it, it's all in there. So that, for me, right now, is all I need to have as a screwdriver with all my screwdriver bits in there, and it's super light, very light. Um, obviously here I've got a gas burner as well that I keep in the back of the cab, not over here, it all goes in the side here. That's where Max sits, obviously. Um, but yeah, just obviously trying to still keep some form of tools whilst on the road, just in case if we need anything, best to have it than have to buy it or need it, particularly when you're out somewhere remote. This stuff here, Navigator, absolutely love Navigator. This sits in behind the uh, Travel Buddy oven and between the 200 amp hour lithium battery. Um, this is, Navigator gear is awesome gear, good quality. Yeah, it's not cheap, um, but you get what you pay for and everything I've bought Navigator has been absolutely schmicko. So this here I'm looking forward to setting up is my barbecue set that will clip in and hang into my awning of the uh, caravan. So pretty much the, where the Q Weber rolls out and slides out, this will eventually slide in to the track of my awning. And then I've got um, some guide ropes that go down to springs into a peg on the ground, and that will just hang freely in the air like that. And I've got it there easily accessible. So if I need all my spices, I've got all my tongs there, which I can put in here once I'm all set up. So everything's nice and quickly accessible directly behind me when cooking on the Q-Weber. Um, obviously you're not seeing this set up guys, but once we are set up, you'll see more of this stuff in full flight. But I just wanted to share with you again, because we get a lot of comments. What are you carrying in the van? What aren't you carrying? What's important? What's essential? What's not? How do you fit everything into the cab of your car, Chris? Well, I'm breaking it down for you now and sort of unpacking it. And then in coming episodes, we'll show you everything fully in flight set up. Um, we've got a doggy bag here. That literally just sits up the top here. Quick, easily accessible. Got all their leads harness in there. So when we jump out of the vehicle, they need a quick pee pee break, toilet break, um, or we just take them out to stretch their legs. Bang, it's all there. And obviously the all important doggy stick with doggy ball. It's the only way we can sometimes get them to come back is when we got this stick with no ball in it and they've got the ball. Um, I just bought this cool steel 14 inch chainsaw, brand new. So in here I've got obviously uh, chain oil, two stroke oil. One thing I'd highly encourage is if you're on the road, take a spare chain and a sharpener because if something happens with the chain that's already on there, at least you've got a backup and a spare, because it'd be nothing worse if you've got a chainsaw with a faulty chain and you've got nothing to sharpen it with or replace it with. Um, so I've got a 14 inch steel chainsaw, which is plenty. It is petrol. I know some people prefer cordless chainsaws. I don't know, I'm just a rev head. I've always been brought up around petrol when it comes to chainsaws and stuff like this. Plus I do carry plenty of petrol on the caravan, obviously for the tinny to power the engine and we'll carry spare to fill that up, which will give us enough petrol if we need this. This really is only being bought to cut up existing firewood, obviously in places where you're allowed to take firewood off the land check always first you can't always take firewood off certain places and their property and land but if there's places we can cut up firewood we've got the ability to do so also if we're on a track and there's a fallen down tree and we can't get through we can cut that tree up and get through safely um, that came in a nice nice uh, steel carry bag as well which is super cool and convenient um, and just makes it easy to pack up and the spare chains in there as well the exciting thing for us at the moment, folks, is we're literally down to three weeks before departure date. And uh, I'm now starting to pretty much clear everything up in the house and the shed to then focus in the next week, week and a bit, we're gonna re repack the caravan for the first time, fully pack it. We'll probably unpack it again and then repack it to find a place and a home for everything. Um, so that's a, a little bit about that. Uh, you may have seen on a previous episode, I've got my um, cordless Makita coffee machine up here as well. Um, 
the wife bought me that for Christmas. That's in a previous episode, but that's fixed in here, hard mounted. So anytime I need a coffee on the road or early in the morning, I can get out of the caravan, bang, I can have uh, coffee there as well. So that's it for what we store in the cab of the car a little bit, uh, unpack and the caravan. But next week, like I said, I'm gonna show you the single wheel carrier setup. I don't know if I'll have the tread mount here in time. They've run out of stock. They said they're available from the 23rd. I think today's the 21st or the 22nd. Hopefully, hopefully I might get it by the end of this week to share with you guys the full setup. If not, because I do have to spray it in a two pack black. Uh, if not, I'll at least have the single wheel carrier set up, installed. I can share that with you. And then I'll jump inside to the caravan now and I'll show you some stuff, what I've just done as an installation and something we're gonna be changing on the inside of the caravan. And a little update we made to improve the, uh, to make the wife happy and uh, keep her satisfied with something in the master bedroom. So let's go and jump into the caravan right now, all right? All right, legends, I just jumped the gun a little bit. We're not going in the caravan just yet because I forgot one accessory that I wanted to share with you that I've put on this week, and that is a tire pressure management system on the caravan. Now this product I bought, it's a Steelmate product from Super Cheap again. Uh, it's about $149. It was a special order, so you can't buy it on the shelf. Well, here at my local area in Adelaide, uh, but it took only about three or four days to, to arrive. Um, so I'm gonna show you the product here now. So you can see here on the wheel of the caravan, we've got this steel mate um, on the valve here of the tire itself. Now, what this does is it reads into the cab of the car through a digital uh, reader that I've got plugged into my cigarette lighter outlet, which I'll show you that in a moment as well. But essentially you get four of these and these have pressure sensors. It tells you if it's front left, front right, uh, uh, front, sorry, front left, front rear, rear left, front left. Um, but essentially what this does, it tells you what the pressures are doing within your car. It's all Bluetooth technology, wireless, uh, pretty easy to install. So pretty much all you do, you can see there, there's a little bit of a rubber housing that just stops dirt ingest getting in there and dust and whatnot. So you put that onto your valve first, then you have a little locking nut that goes on then you screw in the actual sensor reader itself and then you tighten the locking nut back into the sensor. So this is actually theft proof now. So you can't actually just unscrew this and steal, steal it. There is a special spanner that we've got to undo the locking nut behind here to get it off. Uh, the only, I guess, downfall to that that I thought would be not frustrating, but will take a little bit more time is it's probably gonna take me an extra five or 10 minutes now to get these off when I air down and air up, which I don't mind. I think an extra five or 10 minutes out of your life to air up and uh, air down to have a little bit more safety on your caravan uh, is worth the weight in gold. So um, that's that product there. I'm gonna show you inside the cab now what the digital reader looks like. But um, yeah, so far so good. The reader itself, uh, very, makes a lot of noise and it lets you know of any pressure variation. So if you have a slow leak, it'll notify you. If you have a significant leak, it has a different alarm on it. It also uh, has alarms for your tire temperatures as well, which I think is great because in a caravan, it's a long way to see back here. On my van in particular, those wheels are tucked a fair way in and under the wheel arches. Uh, often you sort of looking you know to the side or around and up as much as you can to see what your tires are doing on the caravan whereas now i don't have to worry about that i just keep front and center looking forward because i've got the i've got the sensor gauge in the cab of the car and it's going to alert and notify me of anything and everything that's happening back here let's jump into the cab of the car i'll show you that and then i'll show you the upgrades and what we're doing in the caravan okay folks we're in the cab of the car so in the Land Cruiser, you've got two cigarette plugs in the front here, bottom two house the wives and mine uh, phone charging, and then you can see the actual digital display of the time monitor on the caravan. So at the moment, it's registering 37 on the front left, 35 on the front right. Obviously, you need a little bit of tire pressure in that front right. 37 on the left rear and 37 on the right rear. So all things are good there, um, but that's just what it looks like and the the alarm itself is quite it's quite you know it's there when it goes off to let you know of any pressure variation um, and leak or uh, tire um, tire temperature variation it's quite good so 
You can manually change the settings to suit as well, so the alarm you want, your pressures to kick in at, uh, what temperatures and whatnot. So it does come pre-programmed. I haven't changed the programming myself. I was happy with the preset uh, settings on the uh, tire pressure management system, so I've just left it at that. But yeah, I think it's a pretty cool tool for 150 bucks to keep safety. As we know, tires are probably the, the most important product that you can have not only on your vehicle, but on your caravan when it comes to on-road safety. It's the four contact points you have with the road. So having good quality tires and tire management not only will help with fuel economy and efficiencies, it'll just make for a more enjoyable towing experience. And obviously it will ensure that it keeps you, your loved ones, your family safe whilst you're traveling on the open road and highway. Anyway, let's jump into the caravan and check out what's in store there. Let's jump in now. All right, so we're in the caravan now, and ladies, I'm gonna jump over to you and talk to you about what we uh, have done for the wife and what we're doing for the wife, because a lot of the products I've been sharing up to this point, you're probably thinking, this is boring, blokes. You're probably really enjoying it. It's been a bit of blokey stuff, but this channel is about guys, girls, kids, dogs, everybody and anybody. So behind me, I'm standing in the kitchen, which, no, I won't say it's the wife's domain because that can get me in a lot of trouble. But the wife said to us a few weeks ago she wanted to, to lighten up this space, just make it look a bit more vibrant, more open, more earthy, more airy. Um, so the splashback that you see behind us is the original splashback that came with the caravan. It's quite a dark grey colour. We've run a few trial runs in skinning it with a facelift, essentially, I guess you could say. So... Again, we're being killed by COVID, which doesn't help because we're only three weeks out. Today, the van was meant to be taken down to a supplier of mine who was going to install new splashbacks here. Just resurfacing, reskinning the existing splashback. We're not taking it off. We're not doing, um, you know, glass, anything feature splashback. Again, conscious of weight. But my supplier got hit by COVID. I got notified yesterday. So hopefully next Monday we're rebooked in. When we shoot the next episode, this will all be reskinned. Now I'm not going to tell you what with. We're going to leave it to your imagination. But we ran a test panel across here, the wife and I, and Mel did a fantastic job. Um, but this is a flat panel, whereas here it gets very intricate. You got windows, you got PowerPoints, water reader, everything. So we're getting the professionals in to do it and finish the job properly. Because again. This is our home. This is where we'll be full time. We want it to look Mickey Mouse. We want it to be done properly. So next Monday, that'll get installed. We'll share with you what it looks like. But the test panel that we ran across here with sort of the color and the theme that we're going with looked epic. All right, um, full credit to the wife. This is her idea, not mine. Further to the wife's idea, um, not only the t-shirts, you can sense her creativity is awesome much better than mine. I'm more a practical, mechanical, get your hands in, get your hands dirty kind of guy. Uh, the other thing that the wife came to us with is cabinetry storage. Storage is a big thing for any family traveling on the road full time and it's amazing how quickly you can fill your storage. So behind us in our master bedroom, we've got two cupboards side by side of our bed uh, and Mel just wanted some more shelving space in there because we don't do a lot of hanging. Yeah, we're gonna be wearing t-shirts predominantly on the road and singlets but mainly singlets t-shirts shorts which you can fold up and that takes up less space than actually physically hanging up singlets and t-shirt so we've gone with the option of having more shelving over hanging space so i'm going to show you in the cupboard so you can see the upgrades of what we've done now each cupboard here mirrors each other so what you're seeing on Mel's side here is exactly the same on my side. So this shelf actually wasn't in this caravan state, um, standard. We had all this long hanging space, but what was happening is the only foldable space you had was down there and everything would congest up. You'd be putting jumpers, t-shirts, you'd be putting pants in there and it was just like pulling out stuff to try and get to one item of clothing. So what we've done now is we've created two shelves so it gives us more foldable space. We still got the ability to hang if we want. I don't think we'll use that space. And then up here, we've got storage for our shoes. The wife's put on some non-slip rubber matting here as well. But yeah, the old boy Foss and I made this the other week. Silicate in. It's all hard mounted as well, so it can't go anywhere when we're going up and down corrugated roads. The other thing we're conscious of is as clothes built up here, it prevented access to your 12 volt accessories and getting to your phone charger was an absolute pain in the ass. Actually, I'll show you mine because 
Uh, I might be one step ahead of the wife here. I've sort of st semi started to pack my wardrobe. So let's just jump in there. Sorry, I'm just squeezing around. Yeah, there you go. And I'm probably half packed now. So I've got my fishing shirts all the way at the back there. I've got seven pairs of boardies there. I've still got access to access my 12 volt stuff there. I've still got room to put in stuff here. I've got my pants and trackies at the back there, my jumpers here, and I've still got room at the front there. So it's just really opened up another whole dimension of storage and my shoes at the back there so far. So yeah, super happy with that. Again, thanks to Foss, the old boy. He, uh, I'll tell you what, my old man's taught me everything I know, how to use my hands and my head too sometimes. All right, the last upgrade that we've just done is the Dometic DRS system. Those that don't know DRS, dust reduction system. So our caravan does not come with one standard. And unfortunately, we had limited space where to put it. Uh, normally they put it here, but this one is way too big to fit that size unit, as you can see. We couldn't put it back here because it would be behind the air conditioning unit and this would be blocking it. Now, Dometic is a good quality product. I absolutely rate it in everything and anything. All my fridges are Dometic products. They use the least amount of amperage in draw current. Um, so I went this option. Now, I'll let you know now, this option is $1,000 to get it installed. It's not powered. It's automatically, as um, soon as you hit 20 Ks an hour and above, this system automatically decompressurizes the cabin of your caravan through the airflow structure that it's got within the system. So it's quite easy to install. There's no need for power. It doesn't need to be plumbed in, connected to anything because it comes off of natural flow of air into the vent up top, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, so that was $1,000. If you go the powered one where you've got fan force reduction, they nearly double the price. Um, I did a lot of investigating on this product. I tried to falter online with reviews and videos and anything that I'd seen and found was good. For the value for money, bang for buck, it had good reviews. We're obviously yet to test it on the road. Now obviously it's not gonna keep out every um, microscopic bit of dust, but these keep out a good significant portion of dust. There's still things we have to take into play when reducing dust, like blocking off certain vents, like our gas water heater, the bottom vent that's down there on every caravan for gas regulations, if you're using gas bottles, obviously. Um, so there's a number of things, but this will just help particularly with significant bull dust, just keep it a bit cleaner in here. Uh, very straightforward. So if I want to clean the unit, just pull that down. And I'm doing this one handed, so bear with me. It's always away. There we go. So you can see there, that's the filter. So these filters are replaceable. You can pull them out. They can easily be cleaned out. That's what that blower outside that I showed you before, the Makita, that's what that'll be used for to clean all this dust out. Um, and then you can put it back in there and you can just see that's the unit itself. So it sucks in here, the airflow circulates through the filter and then that's what creates the pressure that pushes the air through the cabin of the van and creates that um, sort of combustion uh, decompressed sort of airflow so that it stops dust coming in through your cracks, any holes, your door frames, anything like that pretty much. So we'll keep you posted on what that goes like. Just been installed, haven't used it yet, but like I said, had really good reviews. So anyway, that's enough for us on this episode. Thanks for joining us as always. If you've got any questions or comments about any of the products or feedback, again, love to hear from you. Drop them in the comments below. You know we'll always get back to you guys and girls. And stay tuned, on next week's episode, we're gonna show you the single wheel carrier, swing away bar installed, hopefully with the tread mount ready to go as well. And a few other little things that I'll leave to your imagination until the next episode. But until then, stay safe, sending you blessings, and it's bye for now. So that's the uh, top of the DRS system, folks, from the outside. That's obviously the front where it, all the airflow sort of circulates in through there. It captures it and decompressurizes it down into the cab to stop stuff wanting to come inside the cab. So that's what it looks like on top of the roof. So 
the unit itself is nice and flush from the inside obviously this not too much of an eyesore but hey at the end of the day when you're doing what we're doing if it helps keep your home clean whilst on the road then not all things can look beautiful and pretty and peaches and roses so thousand bucks installed job done